really on how you how you doing Kelly thanks welcome to the show thank you very much I appreciate it hey no problem it's great to be here I appreciate the uh, invite to be on your show no problem it's so good to see you um I, I just have I just have a couple, a couple of questions for you sure okay um, I'm turning on some lights so I can get my lighting together here okay. so just give me a, here we go okay <laughs> okay Okay, uh, can, can, you tell me, can you tell me a, a little bit about, about yourself? And what, what are you saying in, in music and, and radio production? Sure, so I've been doing radio since um, 1999. Okay. And I started off as a receptionist. And I always, you know, had a feeling that I would work somewhere in the entertainment arena. I just wasn't sure what it would be. And uh, ironically, I was a lover of music, and radio and people and you know putting together great promotions and marketing campaigns and um so you know when i wasn't answering the phone for the radio station i was trying to learn as much as i could in the back hallway and that's kind of how i got my feet wet and i kept trying to submit demos so i can get my own show and be on the radio but they told me i needed you know experience which i did not have oh. long story short um eventually Somebody got sick, couldn't come to work. I was like, I'll do it. And I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. I definitely hear you, you know, because that's on my show now, working part time, being in, with my podcast show is going great. And so, yeah, so, um, so um, what, I see you about a lot of styles, like um, Ashanti, Beyonce. What was like, what was like to meet these stars? Just like meeting anybody, just like meeting you. Yeah. meeting the pastor meeting the teacher wow. you know one thing you'll learn quickly is that people are people humans are humans so you know meeting ashanti mary j blige barack obama mm -hmm. bill clinton uh r kelly it's yeah. no different than meeting the girl next door i treat everybody with the same human respect because i feel like everyone deserves the same human respect until they give you a reason mm -hmm. you know to feel otherwise <laughs> Yeah, because I'm because I actually met Obama myself. He was a very nice person. I met Michelle down the road, you know, and it was like an honor just to meet them for the first black president. You know, I was like, wow. So yeah, so I, I saw the picture. I was like, wow, she met him like me too, and that's what I did. And it was an honor, yeah, to meet his president. You know, to meet someone like that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So did you did you ever want to be a singer or or, 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 or an actress besides you know reporter? Or? Well, you know, growing up, I was in a singing group. It was called wow. Step by Step. And, you know, that was like junior high stuff. Um, I used to could blow, you know, sing. Um, unfortunately, I started smoking Newport Kings in a box and <laughs> kind of messed up my voice for singing purposes. Uh -huh. But I can still sing God. And so I, I made my la living running on <laughs> Um that's been my story. As far as acting, I would love to, you know, get into the acting arena of things and also, you know, do some more television work, uh, commentating and things like that. And I also have a very strong passion for um, activism, you know what I'm saying, and, and equality in this country and breaking down the barriers. That's something that um, I'm very passionate about because uh, we need a lot of help. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean, because I'm, I'm actually an actor myself. I'm a casting, so I'm, I'm trying to find work for acting myself. But anyway, I like how much of movies strong, because I've always wanted, I've, I've been in the movies since I was a kid, so I love that take a serious It's like a dream come true to be able to act or show my, to get my talent, so I think that I can go far, you know. And I, so far, right. so I'm, so far, it's, it's going pretty good so far. I think it'll go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, awesome. So what advice can you give people that want to be that want to be a reporter or be in this business? What advice can you give them? Uh, persistence is key. And you're going to get a lot of no's. You are going to get a lot of no's. But the more no's you get, it just means you're closer to your yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I was told no quite a few times for quite a few reasons. And I wasn't willing to accept no. Mm -hmm. So I kept on knocking at that door. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, it's me again. Hey, I got a new demo. Hey, I've been practicing in the shower on how I would sound on the radio. And eventually, I got to don't mess this up. Go ahead, give it a shot. And I gave it my best. One thing that I learned is it's better to be prepared for opportunity than to get caught slipping. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you say you want this, but the question is, are you prepared? If somebody calls you tomorrow and says, hey, I need you to do such and such, are you prepared to take that opportunity? When they said, hey, can you do this radio shift? 
I wasn't prepared, but I got re prepared real quick. And the first thing I did was go to Best Buy and get my own headphones because <laughs> I needed headphones to do a radio show. Yeah, that sounds that's a good advice though, because you don't you don't want to miss your, miss your opportunity, right? Because you might might never come back. So I'll say, hold on, you know, is always take it if you get, if you get a chance, take it. You don't want you don't want you don't know, have to regret taking to take it, right? So that's good advice, too. right? Absolutely, I can't say that. I can't say that better myself. You know, that's a good answer. <laughs> so what do you like? To, what does that like to do in, in to do in, uh, in 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 the spare time when you know, work on radio? What do you do? What do you do? What do you like to do for fun? Um. Well, I love to travel. I'm not doing too much traveling right now with the pandemic going on, uh -huh. but I do love to travel. Um, I like to shoot pool. I like spending time with my family. I love to swim. I'm also a runner. Um, I like to cook. I like to bake. You know. So I'm kind of a homebody. I, like any woman, I love to shop, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I like balance, though. So, you know, the first few weeks of this pandemic and us all kind of staying at home, working from home, was kind of like, oh, my gosh, a break. I'm not used to this, you know. But after about two or three weeks, it was like, all right. <laughs> I definitely understand. Yeah, we, the, the, we have some in common. I'm just like Vivian. I, 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 I travel so, so we have something in common. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so how is so how is this pandemic affecting you? Is it affecting you seriously? The this this virus, you know, because a lot of places are, sh are shut down, right? So is your station shut down? And is it? Well, our station isn't necessarily shut down, but due to corporate America, uh, some guidelines were put in place to protect the safety of the uh, employees and also to prevent the spread of COVID-19, which is highly contagious, especially when you're sharing equipment like microphones, computers, uh, studios, and things of that nature. So we do have remote setups from home where we're able to do, um, you know, our work from home. And it might not be as crispy clear on the radio as you're used to hearing us, but a very close match. Yeah. And uh, my makeshift studio is actually in my closet and I spend more time in my closet nowadays than I ever have in my <laughs> entire life. <laughs> wow. I hear it because being a business I actually have to do you know to get out there so I that's why I spend time on my podcast show at home you know because I know that I want to get better I got practice 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 practice, practice. That's, that's why I do every day practice to, make, to, to get better you know because that's because you actually got to do you know, nothing make it perfect perfection that's, that, that's the key right hard work and the ranch I always say you know hard work pays off so yeah Absolutely. Um, so where do you see yourself 10 years from now, to, to, to 10, years, 10 years down the line? Hmm. 10 years from now, wow. Um, hopefully alive. <laughs> okay. uh -huh. I want to live at least until I get into my 80s. Um, but from 10 years from now, I would like to be doing a little bit of everything from television work, film work, um, I would like to have a couple of my own businesses uh, that I've established. I definitely have a heart for entrepreneurship and I've been looking into some opportunities and I would love to own a home with a beachfront view. I would absolutely <laughs> love that. And I know it's really expensive, but I'm going to try to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I feel you. I'm the same way too. I want to live, live on a beach too in Florida, California, where I'm so long on uh, the other snow. So I definitely hear you. Just saying. That's my dream too. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so what do you think we can do? To, what do you think we, we can do to change to make the change the world to make the world better? You know, about the about the killing, you know, the hatred, you know, racism. I mean, you know, what can we probably do to make to make you know, pollen stop, you know, you know, police corruption? What can we do to make the world such a safer place for the next generation? What you say, in your opinion? You're saying, what can we do to make the world a safer place? Uh, yeah, because you know, you know, because you know, for, if, 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 of 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 all the killing, by 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 you know, police brutality, you know. It's going on hmm. so what can we do probably to change the world for our next generation? In, in your um, you know what? Communication is key. You know, if you're not going to be willing to talk about it, you can't expect it to change. Uh -huh. You know, I'm going through a situation right now with a family member who, you know, was apparently offended by something that I said uh -huh. based on my personal beliefs and my personal morals and values. And being that I voiced my opinion, I apparently hurt their feelings and offended them. So we haven't talked for like nine months. Wow. And it's hurtful for me because I'm like, hey, I'm different like you're different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you may not agree with me, but at the end of the day, we need to have the conversation so you can understand me 
and I can understand you. You know, the worst thing in life is trying to un uh, explain something and trying to make someone uh, understand something that they have no way of understanding because if you haven't experienced certain things or if you don't have those same morals and values, then it's just white noise in the background. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny because I'm going to read it to you verbatim. I actually posted something today on, um, on Instagram in regards to all this craziness going on. And what I had said was I said, I stopped explaining myself when I realized people only understand from their level of perception. You know, so you, you like, for instance, I posted last night on um, Instagram, I said, I am the mother of an African American son. Mm -hmm. And my son's life matters. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, yes. some some folks got offended who happened to be Caucasian. And the reason they were offended was because everybody knows I'm mixed and they're like, Oh, well, you're choosing a side. No, I'm not choosing a side, but my son is black. And regardless of the fact that he has white in him, at the end of the day, he's always going to be viewed as a black man and he's going to be viewed as a threat and he's going to be treated differently because that's how our society works. You know, and then somebody else said, well, you're not African unless you come from Africa. I said, but we all derive from Africa, especially most black Americans, uh, some from Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? But most of us from Africa, some, some way, somehow. And I don't question when you call yourself Italian or Polish or, you know, Mexican, you know, or, or Irish. <laughs> we got St. Patty's Day and you, oh, I'm Irish to the heart. Yeah, okay. I don't question that. So why is it a problem when we do it and when we want to identify? Why is it a problem? So I say all that to say the conversation has to be had and it has to keep going on and on and on. Otherwise, ain't nothing going to change because you know what? I'm, I, I have people in my family from my mother's side who had a problem with my father just because of the color of his skin. And we didn't have relationships with a lot of those people because of the color of his skin and because of the inner racial breeding or what have you. So long story short, those people were born into being a racist and racism. And guess what? They take it and they pass it on to their kids and they pass it on from generation to generation to generation. This is no new problem. The only reason we hear so much about it is because technology has changed. We have digital media, we have social media and you know, the truth is being told and exposed. That's true. That's, you know, that's definitely serious. This is a serious, serious issue, you know, racism, you know, and, you know, yeah, I didn't care what you're saying because I have to face that stuff myself since I was a kid. So I know what it's like coming from a family who, you know, who, who get mad at you or start speaking to you. So, yes, I mean, I definitely, I definitely know how you feel because it <laughs> happened to me. So I, I can relate to that. You know? it's, it's sad, you know. I'm sure. I think that any black man that is going to be honest can relate at least 95% of them. Mm -hmm. You know, my son's car has been tore up, you know, and searched mm -hmm. and the police just say, Oh, well, we're sorry. Have a good night. Meanwhile, his back seat has been snatched off of the hinges of, of the base of his car because they looking for a gun or drugs because he fits the description of somebody who would have guns or drugs in their mind. Shit is ridiculous, you know? That's that's horrible. And he, and it's not like he only went through it once, various times. You know what I'm saying? And something has to change. I know what you mean, because I cause I <laughs> love that myself, you know, you know. So I know what that's like, you know, because I, I know when I was a kid, my mom could get up on a console and then so I, I know what what that's like because it happens everywhere, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from, you know. And so it does have to so right. I do wish it, I do wish it end up, you know. Is, it is unnecessary, you know, so, you know. Yeah, so, no doubt, no doubt. Absolutely. Yeah, so, my, okay, so, uh, so how were you able, able, able to meet President Obama? How, how, did, how, how did that interview come about? I was actually at an Obama rally at Furman University in South Carolina, and uh, Pastor Johnson, Pastor Curtis Johnson, who is a co-worker of mine and also um, an active member of the NAACP, he said, I might be able to get you an interview. Would you be interested? And I'm like, absolutely. He said, I can't promise anything, but you know, I'm going to try. And I'm like, okay. So I really didn't have faith that the interview would happen. And when the secret service came to get me to take me to the back for the interview, 
I had to scramble with the questions. So what I did is I started texting all my friends that I knew were Obama supporters. And I'm like, hey, if you can sit down with Obama right now. What would you ask him? And that's how I came up with my questions. And um, I think that they gave me 10 minutes to interview him. So we talked about everything from music, Jay-Z, Beyonce, a couple of his favorites. He also said he was a big Lakers fan. Um, we talked about one of his favorite TV shows, which was, um, ah, what was that show that used to come on uh, HBO? It's kind of like Power, but it was yeah. uh, it was something else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, I I can't think about it at the top of my head, but anyways, you know, he was just really cool and down to earth. And then I also asked him about this email that was going around, just saying that he was a Muslim, that he doesn't pray, and you know, he doesn't own a Bible. It was just a really vicious email, and he addressed it, and he had heard about the email, and he addressed everything in the email. And at that moment, I was like, yo, this is a really cool down to earth person yeah. who understands that we live in a crazy world and he just wants to make it a better place. Mm -hmm. So I hear people say bad things about him and I don't understand why, because I don't have anything bad to say about him. Mm -hmm. um, I understand a lot of people aren't a fan of Obamacare, the health care or whatever, but you know what I am, because when my son was sick and he was not under my insurance, he used it. And there was a time where I was unemployed where I had to use it too. So, you know, I, I don't have a bad word to say about Obama, and I would love the opportunity to, you know, talk to him again in the near future. Yeah, me too, because I, cause I, I was trying to get it even, get it even with myself, but, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's kind of hard enough. I've been trying to get it even now he's not president, you know, but I guess it's kind of hard enough, hopefully. Right. Because I, cause I was mm -hmm. I, I, I was the first space station. He was, he was a good president, you know. Um, was, he president right. was he president when you got to anything? Was he president? No, no, he was running and it, he hadn't even beat Hillary Clinton yet in the primaries, but it was the week before the primaries in South Carolina. Okay. Yeah, because I met Hillary Clinton and she was mm -hmm. nice. Also, my church, they, they were nice, you know. So, yeah, and I have to, yeah. I have to say about them, you know. So, most stars are pretty, pretty nice, I think. Maybe not. Yeah. 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 So, so have, you ever thought, have, you ever thought, have you ever thought about running for president yourself? Mm -mm. I don't want those problems. Plus, you know, I got a little bit of a history. I'm kind of wow. like, a, 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 you know, wow. <laughs> I got a little history that they would love to d dig up on me. So, yeah, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I guess I hear you. I, 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 thought, I, thought, I thought about being president, but I know it's a big, but I know it's a, a big responsibility, right? So, you know, being president. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah. So, um, so, so um, I don't think I'm. Oh, 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 so, so, so did, did you go to college? I did, and I went to college for something non-related to media or radio. Okay. I was pursuing the medical, medical field, and, um, you know, I use that example to tell people it's always good to have plan A, like, you know, a lot of our younger men, they want to go into professional um, mm -hmm. sport, but mm -hmm. if you break your ankle, yeah. you know, prof professional sports probably is not going to work for you, so what is your plan B and what is uh -huh. your plan C? I just had a plan A. I was like, well, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna be a, you know, a paramedic. Mm -hmm. And once I got my first certification, which was a EMTB, mm -hmm. and I got in the field and I started having to see people hurt and injured yeah. and sick and, and body fluids and having to pick people up and put them on a stretcher and carrying them down five flights of stairs and, you know, people's nose detached from their face from a motor vehicle accident. When I saw that, I was like, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I actually went to school and spent that money for something I didn't even end up doing. So I did go to college. I was going to um, a school in Cleveland. It was a community mm -hmm. college. And I wanted to get into pediatric nursing after that. But I realized I just don't have the stomach or the heart, you know, to see people in that condition. I'd rather, I'd rather help people yeah. you know, hands on than in a hospital setting and people that are, are, are sick. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have a problem praying for people that are sick, visiting people that are sick, um, as long as they're not contagious, yeah. you know, but um, I'd, I'd rather help people that have kind of gone through things that I've gone through. So that's why I have a passion to one day open my own uh, girls group home because, you know, I, I used to be in a group home and, you know, I understand the struggle and the hustle and, you know, not having a place to go. So I would love to use my experience to give back and serve somebody else to help them get to the next level. Yeah, I respect that's a good thing. I I, I hear you. I totally respect you for that. You know, it's, we need we need we need more, more people like yourself doing that. You know, that's I, I, I salute you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so if I want to uh, if I want to send music, is it 
don't feel mm-hmm. it's also a sense to you i want to see some, some videos i made so you can take a look at it you know the feedback on it you say music I, I, yeah if, I, if, I, if, I, if i'm gonna send you some send you, send you some some videos i, I made my producer on music is, is it okay if i send it to you to, to your email uh, uh if someone wants to contact you yeah, I mean, you can send me, I, I prefer like a link, like a YouTube link. link or something, something clean, because I don't open up unknown attachments because there's so many viruses out here. But, you know, I'm I'm down to check it out. Okay. And and so so can the song files be, in, can it be MP3, MP3 files? Is that okay? Or, uh, yeah, MP3s. Well, uh, how about I, I, yeah, I'd rather you take that MP3 file and turn it into a, li- a link on SoundCloud okay, yeah. or, or YouTube or something like that. Okay, okay, so it's better for people to send you music to do to, to SoundCloud or, or YouTube link, right? It's much easier, right? Okay. Right. Okay, I, I can do that. Thank you. I, I, can, I can find things. And we, we can send, I can send it to the same, to the same, email, to the same email, right? I, I can't you. But Kelly, I can send it to you there, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that that's some good information to, for, 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 for people to know, you know. That's going to touch you. That's going to good. I appreciate that, you know. Um, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so uh, have you, have you, have you, have you ever come to Boston? Come to come to Boston before? Have I ever what? Have you have you ever been to Boston? Boston, Massachusetts, where I live. Boston. No, I've never been to Boston. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh. What about you? Oh yeah, yeah, I live in Boston. That's where I'm from. You know, that's where I'm from. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's where you live right now. Yeah, I'm still yeah, doing it from my house right now in Boston. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. So, how did you uh, get connected to me? I'm just curious. <laughs> well, I think I, I think I first met you back in, t- in 2004, 2005, right? I think I, right. I think I saw you. Maybe, uh, I think I saw, I saw you on, on MySpace, on MySpace, MySpace. I think was, and then, and then I sent you. Then you responded. You were so nice. So I was like, wow. So that's how I got to okay. know. I got, got, got to know you and stay in touch with you because you're so nice to me on Facebook. You know, because most people that some of that email don't really pay, still don't really pay attention to. Like they might say, you know. They did. Mm-hmm. So uh, the man was wondering, but you were so nice. I was like, wow, it's nice to have that first night. You know? mm-hmm. so that's fine. That's all right. Yeah. yeah, I try to answer, you know, my emails and my Facebook as much as I can. Um, I got away from the whole, hey, how you doing? Or, oh, you so pretty, all that. I ain't got time for all that. But if somebody's really trying to communicate and there's something I feel like I can do to help them out on their voyage, by all means, you know, I try to do what I can do. Absolutely, definitely. Um, so, so, um, did you, do did you, do um, did you like, do you prefer to live, to live in California, but, or, 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 or would you rather live in, live in, live cold, you know? I mean, does, 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 does the cold, does, does the cold bother you, the cold air? Say that again? I was asking if you like, I was asking if you prefer to, to prefer to live in warm, you know, it's just to live in cold, <laughs> in, 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 in during the, winter, during the, um, the, the winter time? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I would love to have uh, 12 months of summer, so, you okay. know, or spring uh, mm-hmm. without the allergens. So, you know, if that was Florida, California, Phoenix, you know, it's all good. Would you consider, would you consider moving here to where it's warm all year round? Uh, so you don't feel the cold or snow? Yeah, oh, I would definitely consider it. Yeah, me too, you know. I, yeah, because I used to live in Florida, but then, but then you know, my, my mom passed. So I come at the bus. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get, you know get back down there. So you know, first year of the time, you know, that's why that's why I start a podcast so I can try and get my stuff out there fast. You know, because it's much more. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, so I'm trying to. That's why I'm taking you know lessons, voice lessons, acting lessons, trying to do it all so I can be a professional. And that's why I'm also in school right now. So I'm trying gotcha. to get, yep. So yeah. Um, okay. Yep. So. So, okay, so now, okay, my, 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 last, my last question is, um, is um, what, advice you, what, what advice would you say to someone wants to, to drop out of school and pursue music full time and start getting, start getting, getting the education? Um, don't do it. Yeah. I think that, you know, uh, when you drop out of school, yeah. you're quitting. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if it's high school or jun- junior high school. Now, college isn't for everybody, and I get that. But if you want to drop out of school to pursue uh, music full time, there's no need because you don't need that much time in the world. You can go to school during the day and pursue music at night. 
I mean, Quavo from Migos just got his high school mm -hmm. diploma at age 29 after dropping out of high school to pursue music full time. Mm -hmm. You need your education. You really do. You need that, that, that social interaction. And, you know, I'm a huge advocate for completing what you start. Mm -hmm. What you going to quit for? You know, because even if you drop out and you give your all to trying to make music, that doesn't mean you're going to be discovered. And that doesn't mean no one's going to put you on the radio or TV or whatever it is that you want to be on. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's a, a di it's like a, it's a gamble, you know, and at the end of the day, you would have hated to make a permanent decision based on temporary emotions and, and thoughts. So no, mm -mm. I, guess, I strongly, strongly, strongly disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. That's why I'm in school right now. I still scratch in the summer so I can, can, so I can you know, have a career in, in liberal arts. Yeah, music. So, yeah, so you're right now. So it's better to finish what you start, you know, so you can have something to fall back on. Kids doesn't work out. You're right, though. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I was, Let me tell you, I'm, I run into so many people that want to be musicians, rappers, artists, you know, and maybe not even 1% of them make it, you know? So it's great to have a dream. I wanted to be a model, but guess what? I'm only 5'2", and I'm, you know, a little bit on the thick side, so modeling didn't quite work out for me, you know? But I had another plan, and, you know, yeah, don't put all your eggs in that basket. Mm -mm. I hear it, because I, I actually... I actually now, plus you need to go to school and learn business. <laughs> that's true, yeah, you do. I actually, I actually want, want, want to be a model. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was too big and, and kind of fat, so I couldn't do it, you know. So, yeah, but I want to be a model myself, you know. But they said you, you but they didn't say you're too big, you're always late, you know. Oh, cool. you know? So, this is a hope thing. So, I was like, you know, so, so I was okay, maybe I'll just do some out shows. So, you know, yeah, because people can, mm -hmm. people can be, can be, can be cruel to you. So it's a cool world, you know. So, I mean, that's why I say, right. why be cruel to someone you don't, you don't know you? That's what I sent you now, you know. Just be nice. Right. Actually. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I hear you. Had to, yeah, but well, anyway, I definitely, I definitely appreciate the time. You know, it's good, it's good to meet you first, first, first time, 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 you know, and good to finally meet you, you know, because I want to meet you for so long, you know, and you know, it's been very down to earth, you know, and you're respectful, and that's what it's all about, you know. And I appreciate it. No yeah. problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I enjoyed talking to you. To me, too. And I'll definitely make sure I, I send my visit time tomorrow, okay? So you can hear it. I'll, I'll be in touch, you know. I'm missing. I appreciate it. Okay, sounds good. Take care. Yeah, good seeing you. Hope to see you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.